is Sam and Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today we're going to be painting the loads of love truck in the middle of a bubble blizzard that's going on right now. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He helps me show you how to create these paintings step by step, fully explained every part of the process by tracking me with one of our four robotic cameras. He zooms in on the action. We explain the color mixes. We explain the brush strokes. We explain how to lay this out. If you check the description down below, there's a link to our website. And on the website is both a traceable and a step-by-step. -step. So if you're not comfortable for the freehanding part of this lesson, guess what? You don't have to do it. You can just print out the traceable or use the step-by-step -step to help you. Both of those things will make this painting much, much easier. Are you guys ready to just jump on in? Absolutely. I'm so excited to see everybody's version of this because I know they're going to do great. Now, a couple of things as we're looking at this, I'm going to show you some really cool lavender action here how to create this effect. We're going to do a couple of layers to get the nice depth on the heart in the truck. We're also going to be using the sponge method to create the pink wood, but I'm going to talk about an alternate tool you can use uh, that you might not know about. So let's put this aside. This is a 9 by 12 art surface. On it, we'd like to put wishes and intentions and good thoughts that our community gives us out to the universe. And so... Uh, this one is definitely close to home. We want healing for Anne's brother and sleep for Anne. Anne is one of our most amazing community members. She shares everybody's art videos and just makes sure that the world knows that there's free art education out there. It's just amazing. Laura Lee, support for families and people who are living with dementia or Alzheimer's. And I would like to add a cure or effective treatment for that. Uh, June, uh, for love and light to flow to her and surround her in the universe knows what she needs, uh, people to remember Australia. So this one I really liked because sometimes after something traumatic happens, right, or as the story goes on, it's hard to keep the world's attention on that because everything just moves on. So I just want us to keep, you know, the healing and recovery path going in our hearts for Australia. Uh, and adding to that, safety for everyone uh, around the coronavirus, wherever that is going on, if that's near you, just safety from that. And lots of love and strength to the uh, CDC and the World Health Organization. I personally would very much like a viral video. And of course, as per the usual, a Disney license. Okay, paint colors over here. Pretty simple today. We have quinacridone magenta, cadmium red, cad yellow, docks purple, thalo blue, thalo green, titanium white, carbon black. Um, you can use Mars black here. I have a regular kitchen sponge. So this is the tool I was gonna talk about. I found this really cool bristle brush. Uh, it's a Princeton brush and it's a one and one half inch and it does a very good scuffly effect as well if you wanted to do something besides the sponge. I still love the sponge. It's my favorite. So I am not leaving that at this time. And guess what? First color we put on the canvas, this is going to be like a shocker to everyone I'm sure, is going to be pink. And the reason is, is that we want to give that basis for the wood to have its little wood effect over. So we need a dark color to begin with. I am taking a damp brush and just removing the watercolor words so they don't bleed into my surface, into my art. You don't have to pre-wet the canvas. And if you are going to pre-wet the canvas to improve the flow of the paint, remember, especially if you're painting on economy boards, they can bow and wrinkle if you use too much water. So they'll start to bow when they dry. Now, this, this is gonna take a couple of coats for sure. But the first one I'm gonna put out, I'm just gonna put out the Quinn Magenta. There you go, and that popping. Mm -hmm. It's gonna get that first one on there. because Quinn is a really transparent color. It's a beautiful bright pink. I love all the quinacridone colors. Uh, if you're ever in the art store going, I need a new color and you don't know what color to get, um, Quinn is a great color. Anything that says quinacridone on it, you're going to love. You're very hued up today. I'm very queued up into my pink. I'm all you're quinacridoned hued. out. My hair's quinacridone. You're hued up. <laughs> I'm hued up. So that first, it's a little bit streaky. And it's true we do want streaky, but we want it to be a little bit more opaque and resolute. So my trick for doing this, I'm going to put out some white paint here. And I'll put out a little more for the sponge. My trick to getting this background. I dry this layer, okay? This will be really helpful if you're using economy paints to make the painting look more finished. Yeah, so just go through, make sure you uh, dry that surface all the way off. 
And the reason so is that when you're uh, using your brush over the, the next layer, it doesn't drag or stick or uh, cause any unwanted blair, lay, uh, blending effects. So it's just best to make sure you get that thoroughly dry. And of course, don't use any heat because that heat is bad for plastic-based paint, which acrylic is. So don't use heat, just use the air and uh, it'll speed up that curing and make sure that it stays nice and, and good for you. So, woo! <laughs> Always fun. Now for the next one, I'm gonna dip my brush in, uh, get my quinacridone sort of loaded into it, and let's add some white. Now, not so much white that we take it totally into the lightest pink you've ever seen, but we definitely want enough that we start to see the coverage. Can you see the coverage? Mm. Dipping in water and kind of doing the same again. Because, you know, often in painting, there's a lot of same, 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 same. I will do many little branches or put in many little stars. Now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Yes. Because one of the things that, I, that I'm noting is that until you zoom in, you don't really catch that what you're doing is is the 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 previous layer is very streaky and mm -hmm. you can see a lot through it you want to like where it's there to there yeah but see that the second coat that you've put on there really makes that blend smooth so it makes a big difference that second coat yeah i very much like it get that on there now, this needing to be more pink is so that when we put the aging or patina of the wood on here, we, um, it can really show on top of it. Mm. So that's why we don't take it to a total baby pink. We do want some lightness to our pink, but not so light that, and I sometimes will even come through and kind of streak it up. Uh, this is a number 30 bright, but what you're really looking at is a, a brush about this big that's got synthetic filaments that are firm that let you paint the whole surface. Ah. Uh -huh. That's what you're, what you're going for here. Lots of options out there, but this is a ruby satin bright. Now, for the next thing, I really do need the layer to be dry underneath because I'm going to be using the sponging effect, and this is going to be about the paint sticking to the paint that's underneath it or lamination which is our big thing in acrylic is making sure our new layers of paint stick to our bottom layers of paint <gasps> what is i do i see bubbles you see bubbles does there bubbles well that's because patty loves the shifty heat talk and of course she loves bubbles so i'm going to say thank you to patty thank for you, supporting patty. my shifty you. shifty paint talk thank so you, while you're drying so Yes, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Patty, really appreciate you and appreciate all of the patrons out there who help support what we do. Whether you're giving to us in a monetary way or you're sharing, you know, the videos out there on social media or liking up our videos, all those things. Share with your friends, you know, let people know what we're doing. That's like another great way of helping. So thank you guys all for the support. We really appreciate you being here today, hanging out with us in our crazy quinacridone pink place that cinnamon is at she's very she's on hue you're on oh let me see my hair you're on quinacridone hue on quinacridone hue. yes your i hair am and today your shirt and your shirt my and hair. your canvas i'm gonna be quinacridone for a minute you'll see the reason <laughs> like just expect this pink hair for a minute for a minute and then for a minute more really through april <laughs> Just, just expect it to be lasting a minute because it's the only way we can create any continuity. Because continuity. one of the things that messes everybody up is if I film a video, then change my hair and release that video later, nobody They're... knows what color my hair is, and that makes them, I guess, nervous about when the video was made. <laughs> so to make it easier, I'm just going to stick pink for a minute, and then as soon as I'm done with April, I'm going to celebrate by making watermelon hair. Mm. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take my brush, uh, scrubby side up. What is this brush you got? Uh, this is a sponge. This is a kitchen sponge. I buy these at the dollar store. Yeah. You want something that has this kind of spongy texture, and you can see how I've loaded it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag back, but not press in very hard. This allows the sponge to kind of skip, and then I'll come back the opposite direction. Oh. And I'm making 
that patina of wood. Yeah, you could dry brush it, sure. I see what you're doing there. Do you see? Now I'm going to come in and start from a forward facing. The lighter that you press, the more it'll skip. I do find it how it's helpful to turn it over. And also, and this is the most important tip. You don't want paint in your food, right? Mm, so nope, nope. make sure that your kitchen sponge is not also your wash your ditches sponge. That's a yes. These are I have to have use. lots of safety stuff because my kids like get in there and they're like, they, I don't know, have to open a cupboard to look for a sponge. And my sponge, if it's there being washed, they'll grab it to wash a dish. So mm. if you have other people, I don't know, make a scary toxic jar or something and put like a little crossbones <laughs> on it and be like, certain death. Chain cake or death in the jar. Don't use my sponge. For the most part, it probably would not be immediately health damaging, but you certainly wouldn't want that buildup mm. of paint chemicals in your body because there's a lot of stuff in acrylic paint. So she has to dry again because of layers. And again, she just wants to go through there and make sure that this is thoroughly dry between those so that we don't drag uh, anything with a T-square or any of that uh texture that she's just put on there will disappear if you drag your brush across it. Now, the other tool, and I'll just show this to you real quick, is this uh, Princeton one I thought was actually pretty good. It's a very stiff bristle brush, and because the bristles are very short, it also does this. Oh. So it's a little different in its dry brushing texture, but it was actually a pretty cool tool I found. The shedding on it was appropriate. There's always going to be shedding on any bristle brushes that you ever pick up. I grabbed this at Michael's. Um, I have no relationship to the Princeton company. That would be Angela. So I just found this and thought it was cool. You're just sure protesting. I'm just sure protesting other things that you might be able to do because that's part of why we do it. So you can see it can be done with a dry brush as well. The, the issue with that brush is washing it out. It does not want to release paint once it's in there. It's like, all the paint is mine. Nom, nom, nom. Nom, 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 nom. Just a nom. quick dry again. Quick dry. Oh, there's a quick mute button. So, again, she's just making sure that those paint layers, you don't want them to stick to each other. So you got to make sure that you just give it a quick dry Ooh. between those coats. Yes, I'm going to put out some fluid black. Some fluid black. Because I feel wealthy in my paint, so I'm going to put mm. out some fluid black. So this is carbon black in a non-heavy bodied formulation. Golden calls these fluids. The approximation, if you're brand new to painting, is this isn't craft paint, but it's the same kind of viscosity ah. as craft paint. It's, that, it's about that same thickness. Yeah. So it's very similar. The reason I use the golden is it is super saturated with pigment. Mm -hmm. That's my whole jam there. Um, that's why they get my loyalty. That, that pigmentation is very much my favorite. I'm going to take my T-square. T-square. T-square, and I'm going to measure out three inches. Now, every three inches, so three inches and six inches, I make a mark, and then I'm going to use this to make lines uh, kind of across the canvas, but guess what I'm going to do them in? Chalk. Paint. <laughs> oh, paint. Yeah. Really? Yeah, living, living crazy today. Just. So I'm going to grab a number four round, load just the toe of the brush, just the tip of that brush into the paint. I'm going to come across here. Is one board. Woo! I like to wipe this off after I do that. So you don't drag it? Yeah. And then I'm going to go like this. And see? Measure the other side. Same thing. They'll line it up. Now, on the Amazon affiliate links, guys, I am not the seller on Amazon, right? Those are different vendors and stuff. Um, always check the prices against the list price of your materials and make sure you're not getting marked up prices. Hmm. We've noticed that some of the prices are getting marked up once there's interest. So, like, don't spend more than six bucks on a T square. They shouldn't, be, unless they're metal, they shouldn't be like 20 bucks. They, uh, there are expensive T squares, but they're fine instrumentation. The plastic ones should be under six, six and under. Yeah. So, don't spend like a lot. All right. And same with the affiliate links. Even when I link my paint into them, 
use that as a guide, but check the prices and making sure you're always getting the very best price for the product. I honestly think it's a good idea to have Google Alerts set up for Jerry's Ironorama and Dick Blick and Hyatt's and King's Framing and Art and Jackson's and Texas Art Supply and Cheap Joe's and all of the places so that you're always getting the very best price for your product and you should be spending about 30% less than the list price. Mm. Just stuff you might not know if you were new to painting. Mm. Okay. If we don't have any questions, I'm going to dry this and show you guys how to sketch in the truck. But if okay. we do have questions, I'll sip coffee and answer them. Let's see. I'm going to go over and look at questions. Well, I, you know, because I've been kind of spaced out just in here watching Cinnamon because I don't know about you guys. I just sort of sometimes get back into my lead back and watch her do her thing mode too. So what, what? I was just saying that I got I was guilty of being in lean back Sherpa mode. Oh, did you? Yeah, because I was just sort of watching my wife paint and chatting like with you. Like you do. And not particularly keying in the questions and chat. I was kind of like everybody's laughing and kind of having a good time, but I wasn't super. So I'm going over to make sure I've got. I've got so there's a couple of things. Like if you look at this, you can kind of tell where objects are. Yeah. So about two inches in right Ooh. here is not including the bumper is the front of my truck, right? And then right here at the four and a half inch mark is about where the hoods and hubcaps and stuff starts going. One and a half from is the back of this little truck. And then it's four and a half to the hoods. So that kind of just lets me know. And if you want to know how far down to make that, I would say it's about... Maybe two and a half, two and a quarter to the top of the hood. So those are weird little marks, but what they do is they let me know, you know, how big I'm drawing things and what's going to happen. So to draw this at first. You know, worst case, you could just squish the roof and have a low rider. Worst case, true. That's, I mean, like, it's truck. This is kids chalk in color. That's all it is. You know, a truck is a truck is a truck. Then. There are so many variations on it. So as long as you kind of get that truck-like feel to it. Especially on these. These are designed yeah. to be as simple as possible. And you can really see the lines of this in the traceable, and you can see it also. It's an emotional truck. It's an emotional truck. You can tell by how much love is in the bed. There's so much love in the bed of this truck. And this is going to come down about like almost, I'd say, quarter inch, half inch below our line there. So it's sort of interesting because you can, I'm going to say bumper comes forward a bit, bumper, and then another little bit that's a headlight. From here, there's this really cool wheel wheel thing. John knows what it's called. A wheel well? Yeah, that thing. And there's a fender. Something. So you got a fender and a wheel well. See, so there's the hood. And there's the, there we there's go. like a lot of parts there. There's a lot, right? There's a couple parts. So uh, I like to make sure that this line sort of kind of lines up there. Oh, there's the fender you're driving. Yeah, that, I'm that's driving the front the fend fender. Front fender. Am I doing good? Yeah. John is the car expert, so he always tells me like, "Girl, girl, that's not how cars work. That's a concept car. I do a lot of concept <laughs> cars." <laughs> Everybody loves a concept car. I think he's so sweet. He's like, "That's a really good concept car, baby." <laughs> you can't all be Billy the artist, right? <laughs> I love that that guy calls himself Billy the artist. I am Billy. The artist. He's a really good uh, motorcycle artist that I oh. follow on Instagram. I talk about him on occasion. He just, if you're into mechanical art, he's quite good at it. So Chip, here is my window. Chip Poos is kind of the guy when it comes to drawing cars, though. Yeah? Well, he's up there. He's a modern, like, hot rod artist, like, for sure. John like, is always trying to get me to do a chip boost. Just so you guys know, Ed Roth. That's a goal an, of John's. Ed Roth is another great car. And a little artist. heart. So you can kind of see these just come together in little rectangles, right? It's not, it's not, you know, that bad. Now this on this one, I like to have about a quarter of an inch before I start the fender. And my trick is just to make sure that these fenders somewhat, uh, I don't know, look like each other. And I like to slope this one down a bit because some of the trucks have that. I don't know. It's a thing that happens. 
wheels. I yep. just make circles. And then the fender sort of goes around them. Now see, you can tell if all the little lines are all lined up, it's probably a Ford. If they're not all lined up, they're really like Josh. missing gaps, it's probably a Dodge. So, you know, yeah. just to kind of give the flavor of which kind of truck you're looking for. It's such a... All right. <laughs> and then, of course, there's a bumper that matches the front. Now, we have these really cool hearts in the back. And what I like to do is, okay, so there's a front heart. Get that one sort of done in. And then there's a nice big heart. And this little point might go in there. So I'll use the truck to finish it out. So that's a nice big heart. And then a bunch of little hearts that we'll do kind of off there once we get that in. And then we have a ground right here. So that's what that is. Now, once you get that in, we're going to start putting that in with the mix of phthalo turquoise and blue that we've got. So let's put out some green, phthalo green. And let's put out some phthalo blue. And just real quick with uh, phthalo blue, we will go ahead and... Get a lining going on the truck, okay? All right. Let's just there do that are, real fast. I'm going to let you do that. There were a couple of good questions that had come in here. Oh, it's a good time to do it because i got to line this for a second. Okay. So one of the good questions that came in earlier that I wanted to catch, and I can't remember who, I'll get who it was earlier, but how do you know what colors to select when blocking in your underpainting? Okay. So what I'm really looking for is I'm looking for the deepest value that I'm going to be building up from. I'm just blocking in deepest values. If you're just talking about a traditional underpainting, if you're talking about doing anything interesting in color theory, you got to get that color harmony wheel, which I do think I have links down below. But if you're just talking about like, you know, what's the undercolor of this fur, really look at what's the depth of the color. And I pull that in. The truck has a deep kind of like aqua blue. That means I'm going to be blocking it in an aqua blue. Hmm. Now, we had another question. I have another answer. Are quinacridones harvested wildly? No, these quinacridones are all farm raised. Yeah. Where do what is a quinacridone and where does it come from? It comes from the lab. <laughs> okay. So we're we're not we're not upsetting any local ecosystem by the harvesting of our quinacridones. I, I, we could be, but uh they're not harvested. They're created they're uh, definitely this is a pigment that was this modern pigment. It was created entirely uh, in a laboratory. It's a chemistry pigment, like the new um, Yinmin Blue. Mm. There is no like natural source. Thalo Blue is another one of those. It's not like an ochre. It's not like an ultramarine or an ochre, or a yellow ochre, or bird sienna. So yeah. in paint, the pigments can come from natural sources, and the pigments can come from man-made sources. And the thing you're looking for in that is, is the pigment light fast? In other words, is it going to fade out on you in two seconds? Because if it's going to do that, how pointless was it? And is it, you know, uh, how's it priced? Because some pigments can get quite expensive. Uh, Michael Harding uh, makes one of my very favorite paint lines uh, for oils, and he's got paints that are in the $700 range hmm. for tube. That's about the pigment and the difficulty of making the product. Yes, yes, yes. Making a wheel. That's the hardest part for me. Yeah. <laughs> making a wheel. I have to say making a wheel. So <laughs> Who uh, knows what will happen? Because otherwise you're going to put triangles in there? <laughs> What's, I mean, it could you... happen. It could. You've been it, married to me for a minute now. You know it could happen. It's true. That's just doing this outlining. We're going to come back with black lining, right, guys? But right now, I just want to know where stuff is going to go so it feels kind of good. And I can even go ahead and, and maybe put a heart here, a small little heart right there. That's a cute one. I like that one. Oh, I changed up my hearts. Is that okay? Yeah, I think so. Just do whatever hearts you want. <laughs> the reason these are just supposed to be falling out of this loads of this truck is so full of love that hearts are falling out of it, right? Mm -hmm. Bumpling down the road with its full of loveness, right? Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to make a real easy thing. I'm going to take some blue and white together. Just go ahead and take advantage of this moment to paint in this window. 
Now the white's really important because it really helps us, and this is just the phthalo blue and white, get rid of that black mark. So is this the same thing as opera pink? No, this is different than opera pink. Opera yeah. pink's a is a similar color. It, it's in a similar family, but it's a completely different color. I love opera pink. It's not often represented in acrylic paint lines, but I think it's one of my favorite. You get into luminous opera, and it's my favorite, favorite, favorite. Mm. I love that pink. Luminous opera. Luminous opera. Yeah. If I was only going to invest in one, I'd invest in the luminous. Um, <laughs> I don't know why you would have that limitation on your paint purchases in any way. It's it's like say, do you want to sparkle or not sparkle? I th I think that when given that option, you have to choose sparkle. Or but I don't know why I'm saying, oh, you only get one paint. I don't think that there's some weird, you know, Game of Thrones moment going on here where only one paint is allowed. Now I like to add just a smidge of white to sort of reveal this turquoise just some. It's not gonna be my lightest turquoise, but I just want it to show up as visibly turquoise. Otherwise, sometimes it's almost a chromatic black, isn't it? Mm. So rinsing that out. I'm gonna get a bright, any old bright, doesn't really matter, just one that fits in the spots. I haven't done this in a while. This is a number six bristlon bright, but what I'm talking about is just a number six bright, because that's a good size, and I'm gonna paint in all the spots. Now I do like to kind of, um, and you can see again, the white helps hide the black line. If you're painting like a Liquitex Basics or uh, the entry version of Artist Loft or Teza or whatever, um, you might want to paint your truck white first, mm. allow it to dry, and then paint it in with a color. Gotcha. And the reason for that is, is those pigments are not well loaded, and so the fix for that is just to um, sometimes create the object in white. And we don't uh, leave it white because we have to do this long brush stroke across the canvas to get the effects. So there's no way to really paint around it. Mm. Wouldn't work well. So why did you use a, a lighter blue for the window instead of a darker blue value? Well, I'm going to add the darker blue in a minute. Oh, you're, okay. Yep. So. But I added white to this blue to help hide the black line that I can easily glaze in the dark blue for the reflection. Ah, so Can't you can't really do the dark blue because phthalo blue is too transparent. You used white as a to make it a more mm -hmm. covering. Yeah. Interesting. Because white is probably in in your paint bucket, in my paint bucket, our most opaque covering tinting, uh not tinting, uh covering Pigment. Tinting, I would say it's phthalo blue is pretty tinting. Docks and phthalo blue are very tinting. It takes very little of those to uh, change your white color. Yeah. Diox is one of those ones that you get a little diox in something, it goes everywhere. Yeah, it's it's very staining as a color. Polluting. Staining. <laughs> <laughs> it's not polluting and you and you want some of that effect, right? I like this sort of rustic style of painting. Now, let me ask you something about that uh, thing you're holding in your hand. This brush, this bristle on, yes. It's, so it has, uh, would you call it a short handle or a long handle? This is a long handle. That's better for standing at an easel. Short handles are better for sitting at a table. Yeah, okay. Uh, this particular brush is really good for what's called a self-sealing stroke. So it's got a very smoothing stroke. It doesn't leave as much of the brush mark behind as, say, other brushes. Ah. The weird thing you might not know about the brush. One of those things where it's like, do you have a flag? <laughs> yes. It's because exactly them, one of those things. Do you have a flag? Without them, your brush won't self-seal. Come across here. Just make sure that that black line is covered. So if you're having trouble covering it, you just more white paint into it. And then the rest of the truck is very nice. Yeah, so that's a lot of times. Sometimes when I use a lighter color, it's because I am dealing with the fact that the color is transparent and I'm needing to co cover something that's underneath it. Sometimes it's not as important. 
And that really comes from just decades of working with the products and going, oh, this is the way around that problem. Yeah. That's all it is. Messing with the stuff a long time. Like, I can tell you how all the pro paints are different. <laughs> like, like, why, like, what's different between the brands? Like, is there any difference or? You painted with a few of them. I painted with a few of them. I can tell you how they're all different, what their awesomeness is and what their, you know, maybe challenges are. You know, besides a price point, <laughs> which is all of them have a price point issue. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. Observationally, it seems like there are some paints that have quirks and there are some paints that have problems. Yes, I would say that would be one of the difference between pro paints and student paints. Professional grade paints, which is the one where the pigments are, the tubes of paint are all different prices. They're not one price. Is the quickest way for a new painter to tell. Um, they have quirks. Yeah, they have personality uh, quirks. Like personality it's, quirks. It's not good or bad. It's just something you've got to be aware of. When you work with it. Right. Student paints have problems. They create issues and they can create problems for the student. They tend, yeah. And like an example of that is sometimes hues can mess with you when trying to mix colors. Yes, exactly. Because a hue is not a pigment. A hue is an approximation of a pigment. So when people are like, can I mix yellow ochre? Yes, you can. But everything you mix after that in the yellow ochre range will move further and further away from the color mixes. You know where you can see a good example of this? Hmm. In sometimes in those very basic craft paints, they mention some are mixable and some are not. And that's why. Because yep. in that, some of those pigments. I'm like going to do black you... around the tire right now. Yeah. We're just narrating it for the closed captioning. When yellow and blue don't make green, it's probably because you're working with hues. Or, or a bias on the paint that you're or, not aware of because ultramarine yep. is biased red. An unknown bias. Right? Oh, so, man. Hidden bias. That's the number one <laughs> thing right. that just messes with new painters is the hidden color in their pigment. It looks like a blue, but really there's a lot more red in there, you think. So when you try to make green, you get a very kind of drab olive color. But if you're trying to make purple and you work with a quinacridone magenta, wow, you get some beautiful purples. And if It's about what... understanding it. Like when I hear an artist be like, ultramarine is a terrible color, I'm like, oh. You don't know color theory because <laughs> none of them are terrible colors unless they're toxic they are they have quirks they have hidden primaries and if you would like to learn more about this on our website click on videos you can in the search there type in any of these topics bias color hues any of those things they'll pull up all, there's a bunch of videos there and they'll all pull up for you to just take you to the explore. knowledge you are seeking. That's right. So I'm going to take this number six, and I find the number six is a perfect size uh, size for bumper. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, because look. Hold on, let me get over here. It's this bumper size brush. Oh, for this size canvas, it's not all bumpers everywhere. Farmer safety. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you can take this chance if you want to. I'm going to do it with my round. If you're very comfortable with your uh, square brush, you can uh, absolutely put the centers in. But I tend to do it with my round brush and sort of just go swirl, swirl, because it's a whole thing for me. Yes, so you know. I know what I'm doing. I went and grabbed the wrong color. Black. Did you? Yeah, I just want the black. All right. It, I'm just using this pigment because it's what's out. All right. Well, I'm just watching. Keep confusing me on where you're going to be. There. I got confused for a second about where I was going to go. Sometimes I'm looking at like, there's this organic space in which we can allow the paint to dry. And I'm just sometimes going, ah, let it dry. For a minute. Now, pad red. And I guess I could have put that closer to the magenta. But we're going to do this interesting thing. I am going to probably, oh, different number six bright. <laughs> Still number six bright. They're really all half of one, you know, six of one, half a dozen of another. I'm going to take these two and a smidge of my white into it. Can you guess why? Covering up the black bar. Just right there. This is sort of the underpainting for the heart. 
And I'm going to get that in now while I can. This is quinacridone magenta, cad red mixed together. Ah. And then I will put uh, cad red over the top. Cad red is over the top. It is over the top. It's a very, that was a, that was a game changing pigment when it was invented. Now, it, when you get out there about cad red, things to know about cadmiums. Yes, cadmiums are not good to ingest or certainly inhale. You don't want them inside your body. The cadmium pigment in Artis pigment is coated and it's bound within the pigment. So as long as you're not aerosolizing it, you're not getting any in your body. And they've made it as unbioavailable as they possibly can. That said, you know, any of the paint colors that we use because they come from chemicals or pigments or natural things, it doesn't really matter what it is, could be, a, could be an allergen. So just always be aware that that's a factor. Can I say the thing? You can say any of the things. Don't eat paint. Don't eat paint, please. Don't eat paint. Please don't eat paint. Don't set fire to paint. Please don't, don't, don't set fire to paint. Don't set fire to paint. Uh, and and I, I, I think last time we said somebody was like, but the street artists do. Street oh, artists oh. in the middle of a house trying to make some money, and they're absolutely well aware that that fire can climb up the can and explode on their hands, and emergency rooms do deal with it. It is a risk they are taking to put food on their tables. So just, yeah, don't use fire. It's not good for... Also, they're professionals, and you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are, who be it us to tell you not to use fire? Yeah, you already know how to do your thing. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple artists out there that can work with fire, but if they are very well informed on their yeah. product and when it's going to start off-gassing and releasing problematic chemicals. Yeah. And if you need any more information about that, just ask a fireman. Yeah. They'll explain to you plastics are not good for you when they burn. Yep. And that's just the start. I'm just painting in that heart, you know, kind of more pink. Because that's going to be our pink forward heart. And I really like it like that. And I'll go ahead and just get the little mix mix going for all these other little red hearts. Mm, the little heart. Yeah. So this one is just kind of like we're just painting this in. I know we've done like a lot of public service announcements. But I like to, on our beginning paintings, because we get a lot of parents and families, and there's a lot of information out there online. Uh, not There's no oversight committee, right? So not all of it is accurate. Actually, Golden just did the best article on their Just Paint blog about um, what was being said out there about the underbinding of paint. And they did a fantastic, it's their latest article, I think, a uh, study on how much water you can add to paint before it's really a problem, for real. Fantastic article. All right. And whether you're new to painting or uh, an experienced painter, I highly recommend subscribing to Just Paint. It's a free online blog, and it's a tremendous resource. Tremendous. Mm. Now, I really, oh, I guess the last thing I can do, this is the last thing I can do, is I can take my black and my white and make kind of a nice little hubcap gray. I'm going to come here in the center with my round number four brush, and I'm going to just kind of make a inside my higher hubcap. Again, not Billy the Artist. <laughs> oh, you're on this. Yeah, just adding the, I don't know, these do something on the car. They're important. There's whole stores dedicated to them, right? To these little covery things. The wheel. The, well, yeah. Yes. <laughs> there's little, whole stores about covery it. things. So they must be super Upcaps. important to people because there's whole oh. stores. I'm oh. going to dry the painting. Wheel. So, yeah, my, I was, ooh, yeah, you just saw my little camera go wandering off there. So that's what that was, little, like, going, what was that? My, my fault. Anyway, wheels, they make the truck go round and round. I guess the wheels in the truck are around. All right. So I guess I got to figure out what I'm going to get back to. What, what? I was all befuddled because my camera ran away on me, and I was like, oh. then what? And then what? I'm going to get some clean water. I just want to show you guys something. When you're ready to remove the chalk, it removes if you get the kids kind with just uh, clean water and a brush. See? Oh. So that's what it is. I 
very easy to do. So I know that's a question that comes up. We're going to get our just blue. And we're going to come to the back of the window. Downward stroke and kind of pull out a few forward strokes to talk about that reflection. Not bad. Now I'm going to add, I'm going to grab a bunch of this and make a much lighter blue for my truck. And I'll just take this brush and I'm going to dry brush, which means I don't have a lot of water on my brush. I'm trying to leave a, like, let a lot kind of show through. Very similar to what we did with the wood technique, isn't it? Hmm. I'm going to pull this down. I try to be very painterly, which means I don't hide my brush strokes. You know, the brush strokes are the brush strokes. I um, sometimes also will do things like curve this a bit, a few places to kind of imply that. And it's just fun to grab little bits of lighter turquoise and allow some of this to go underneath because it kind of makes it feel like a patina of an old farm truck, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and to have a door panel that doesn't match a fender is not uncommon on old trucks. They sort of patina and age at different rates and the, especially the tops of them tend to, you know, they tend to bleach out a little bit more unevenly. And so wow, I'm just, you're so involved. <laughs> Like, so you, you really can't do this wrong because the imagination is going to, you know, is going to make this right. It's an emotional truck. It's an emotional truck. This is an emotional, charming truck that I like very, very much. You know it's not a Chevy because all you'd see is the tail light. And sometimes I'll even come in and be like, oh, let's get an even lighter little bit. And I'll then you put that right there. The front of the fender. These are nice little touches that you can do. You can be as playful as you feel like. And I'm just still have enough of that phthalo blue line to know where each little zone of the truck is. And because we painted it blue first, what's shining through? The blue underneath. Really makes it look very cool. Now, if you really like this, but you weren't feeling the hearts, put a bunch of flowers out the back. Mm. Put a bunch of balloons out the back. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. This one will absolutely customize up. Now, the thing to remember is that everybody's doing little old trucks right now. So don't panic if you see another blue truck with flowers out the back. You know, they've been painting blue trucks with Parts coming out the back since there's been blue trucks. Yes. Actually, there's some vintage art I found. <laughs> it's uh, in the public domain of it. So I would say yes. Yeah, I mean. Uh, I mean, obviously, this exact truck is, is like a thing. Sure. But, you're, but, Amer you know, but not the idea of a truck with flowers. I'm Americans. adding a little bit of a light blue kind of highlight to a couple places. Here we're doing. Yeah. I just like to do that. I can. Our love affair of vehicles has been a long standing both in art and in what? Your love affair of vehicles certainly has been. <laughs> well, just sort of as an you know, America. Brushing down that top highlight. So it's making little highlights right here, guys. And you can see I'm just brushing those down. The trick for how my brush is making this work is that it's just dry. That's the that's the whole trick. Whole trick. The next trick is that I'm going to put out a little cad yellow. This next bit uh, will work. I think I actually may wait till I line so it can go over the bumper. Oh, doesn't really matter. You just grab the yellow. Yellow is very transparent. So I'm on the edge of this number six braid, and I'm going to make a little line that sort of goes up at an angle from the headlight to up here. And then to help myself, I might make another little angle. And then I'm going to just brush out the yellow from the headlight in a fan. And it was fanned out. And you're going to get some just white, not white and blue, because otherwise you'll have green. 
and from the headlight, make little lines. White lines. Can you see those? Yeah. Now, your wonderful little truck is bumping down the road with a little bit of light on it. Yeah. Who doesn't love that? I think that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Red. Get some. Just paint in your whole heart red. Much like the truck, the underpainting can show through. It can be very rustic. You can paint it solid, or you can paint it where there's little bits of the pink popping through. Both will work. I tend to like the little more rustic version, but it doesn't really matter for your end result. Mm. It's really about your preference. I'm just brushing line. Can see I use the edge of the brush? I do. This is kind of, if you've ever sewn, you sort of understand how you use the edge of the foot to guide where you're going. Same thing, very similar thing to your brush. So I use this outer edge of my brush to get a line. You might not know that if this was your first painting. <laughs> and don't feel weird. Like, there's no questions that it's, it's like, like, people will be like, oh, you should, well, people, our community will not give you any grief about questions that you don't just intrinsically know the answer to. Because you can't know all things when you start. When you're a beginner, that's what's awesome is you get to discover all the things. New. For the first time. You know, so ask all the questions. Come and know what they are. Ask them. Someday you won't have as many questions and you will miss that time. Yeah. So enjoy that time now. Now, how I get these little hearts painted is I actually just use the toe of the brush and kind of come in and fill them in. So they're not that bad for me. Nope, I don't want pink. I want red. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. I want this to pop a little bit from the background. I'm gonna do an interesting thing. I'm gonna get a little of my yellow into my pink. There's a bit of water there I didn't expect. Yeah? Yeah. Just warm it a small amount. I do want a lighter pink. And uh, what I painted on there. And you don't want too much yellow or it's going to get too peachy. And you don't, if you're having trouble with the mixes, just do pink and white lighter. But I do want this heart to be a lighter pink. And I may even come here and add a little more white to pink it up. Because it's different than its friends. The next fun thing that I get to do is what's called black lining. So that's going to be going around all the major objects and things uh, to kind of outline them and stabilize them. So I'm going to take my brush into that black paint on the toe and I'm going to come around here. And I'm going to just outline all the major lines on my truck. What? Yay. We're doing it. That'll look awesome. So you can see it coming together. It really just does make it pop. It makes it pop. You can really see your truck then. I'm going to outline my bumper. I don't actually out outline the headlight until I have white. There they go. Really comes together. Just pops together really, really quickly. And you get to do the same for all the hearts. Now I might change the direction of my painting so I have an easier time. Then I'm going to outline all my hearts. 
I could also do this with a Posca paint pen. Yeah? Yeah. Be a great time to get your Posca pen out and play if you have them. You could get all colorful and even add more hearts in different colors. Mm. And more whimsy to your truck. There we go. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Those hearts are, they're pop, pop, popping, as Ruby Rod would say. Yeah. <laughs> All the few Fifth Element fans go, <laughs> yes! Lilu Dallas Multipass. We named our dog Lilu. That's how I did that movie. We, were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had a dog named Lilu. She was not the perfect being, but I loved her perfectly. Mm -hmm. It was super awesome. But she's a little crazy. Crazy little dog. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> so we're going to let all that have a bit of a dry. And I can come back to my bright. And I'm going to get some of my green, and I am think I'm going to take some of my black just to improve its coverage and its depth, right? Because we want the initially we want it to be quite dark. And I'm going to brush back and forth on the toe of my brush. Maybe bring some forward. Come under the wheel and forward a bit and come behind the wheel and back a bit. Let's just kind of imply a little green road underneath. Now let's talk a little bit about the kind of clumps and grass. So we're going to be doing lavender, and lavender sort of does a clumpy thing, and it's okay to bring it above your truck. But basically to get that, what I would do is I would fan, make some clumping fans. You're going to love how easy this lavender is to do. I think I'm going to do it in a second, like, future video. Like the easiest lavender landscape ever, or something crazy. So just fanning out some of the grass lines. Now this might be, for you as a beginner, the most troubling part of the whole piece, because in this, you're going to be using some of your imagination to plan your grass. Things to remember is the fanning. Make sure that some are long, some are short. That it's kind of like random and expressive and playful. Hmm. Now I'm going to come here and get some clean white out. And I'm going to make a center line down my truck. I'm going to paint in a heart. Oh, yeah. Right here in the center of the truck. I should have used my round brush, but I didn't. <laughs> so I was being lazy. But it worked out. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this here and I'm going to wiggle a mark. And make another little mark. Those are reflections. I'm going to come here, mark, mark. Maybe a little bit one forward here. And again, a little mark there. Outline my headlight. Little little value over the tires. I think I want that one to be a little bit more gray. I'll come back and fix it a bit. That got a little crazy on me. Just always go back, and make anything how you want it. You're never ever trapped. Sometimes things can feel really stressful in a painting. Yeah. Because you're like, you're new and you don't know like, well, what happens if I make a mistake? Oh, you let the paint dry and then just paint over it. That's what you do. Let your paint dry. Don't try to fix it in a panic while the paint's wet. Don't do that. Let your paint dry. And the truck's got a little bit of reflection now, right? Mm. But the hearts need a little reflection as well. 
So how I do those is I make a little mark, a little thing. Oh, yeah. Just a couple little touches of highlight. That's pretty fun. Now at this stage, we put out our dioxazine. We still have our Quinn. Mm -hmm. We've got some white. I might want to put out some white that's clean that I can get to easily for the techniques I'm about to do. This is going to be some easy peasy lemon squeezy lavender. Ah. But to get to the easy peasy lemon squeezy lavender, we got to make some more grass. <laughs> so take some of your green and your cad yellow and grab a bit of your white, not so much that you mint it. And then we're going to. Ooh, just add some little layered grasses. Yeah, you want some just lighter colors, some value changes. I might go wiggle, wiggle. See? Like everything else. Things build up. Mm hmm. Now here's the trick to make sure that um, your uh, lavender is gonna be bright and not too muddy. I'm gonna dry this green with yellow because the yellow will gray the purple. Just wiggling some of that here. The wiggles, mm -hmm. they just wiggle, 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 wiggle your brush. So this would be time to dry that. So when we put the purples and blues on there, yellow doesn't get in there and or the hue. So yeah, she's just uh, going to go through, make sure you get that thoroughly dried off. We talked about why you need to do that before. Oh, don't forget, if you, some folks were asking, if you'd like to know more about our patronage program, um, you can go out to our, we our website, theartsherpa.com forward slash patron, and you can find out information for it out there. And we thank you guys so much for uh, asking about today. that. Help. Oh, so. showing my stuffs. Mm. <laughs> I so. do appreciate that very much. It really helps us do our goofy. It lets us be here. It does. It lets us be here, and we appreciate it greatly. Mm -hmm. Stay yeah. breath. We're about to do the flowers. Flowers is like the frosting of a painting. Best part. Absolutely. If you're having fun with this, I really want to invite everyone to join me this year for Acrylic April. It's going to be our biggest event yet, like ever. And if you start from painting one and make it all the way through painting 30, you are going to be transformed. For sure. This is actually, I'm really excited. This is like one of the most prepared for months we've done. <laughs> we're we're going to be all the way up to the wire as usual, but we're good. <laughs> There's a lot happening that month. So I'm going to do a thing called loosely mixed. So much happening. And I'm going to grab some whites. So you saw me grab a little quinacridone, a little purple. Just using the edge of the brush tap down some lavender and the first one is again the purple and the quinacridone and the white look at those aren't those fun oh yeah you can do a big wide flat it works just a super fun way to do lavender Look at that lavender. Mm. Well, we got we got lavender. Where do we want it? Anywhere we'd like to put it, because now we know the technique. <laughs> you can lavender. You can lavender if you want to. <laughs> so lavender. That's the that's the magenta and the purple. I'm going to get right into my blue and purple and white. And let's come back and add some of that. Oh, Lily was catching that your uh, rear bumper hasn't been lined. It hasn't. Thank you, Lily. You, would have, you know what? You would have come back and looked at that later and gone, oh, and I you would have lined it. <laughs> And you would have been like, no one would have noticed except Lily. Oh, you guys always notice. Like, dude. I'm 
sometimes you get so into the teaching part of the process that you're just like you overlook like yeah you're like wait what's happening i didn't put the pupil on that person just mix up the colors as you want you can do just blue and white too see simple simple little lavenders now, as you said, I'm going to rinse out and I'm going to grab some of my black here. Make sure that that is definitely, definitely mm -hmm. fine. And then just one last, I've got some green into it, but I'm going to just really, and I'll get some white here. This is a very bright color. Very spring green. A little bit of that there and here. More yellow if you want it. Look at that grass and mm. that spring green. That's all it is. I think we got it, guys. That looks Time amazing. Time to sign it. Let's put a little sign on there. Let's put a little signature on there. And so here's what I have to say about signing. I'm going to put out some white food plant. So when you're signing, uh, and you don't have to sign your artwork, though I highly, highly recommend it. Um, what I would say is here's why I think it's good to put on a maker's mark. Because people are going to want to know who made it, and they're going to want to maybe know more about you, family member, you don't know some person in the future. It's always nice to say, that this was yours, this was your process, that's a bit about your maker's mark, you know, letting people know. Um, and while it is not required anymore in art, I think it's a very nice thing to do, and it, I think the fashion of not signing right now, <laughs> if you ever want to see my mom get upset, mention not signing paintings. <laughs> she just loses her mind. Um, I think it's probably going to be something that passes and is more relevant to abstract art. But for those of us that are painting pictures that look like something, it's probably a good idea to put a signature on. When you're signing, notice that I'm not signing it in CAD red. Oh, yeah. And the reason for that is, is I put a big CAD red mark here. It would absolutely become an element of the composition, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Right? And it'll pull the eye down to the signature. Now, <laughs> the narcissism of it all aside. <laughs> you can do that if you'd like. You can do that if you'd like. I've just found that I like to sign things where, yes, it's a signature, but the signature is still considerate of the whole painting. Wow. Okay. Whew. Let's bubble oh, it up because we did it. That. We did it, guys. You really look did. Look at us. We did it. On the bubble. Woo! You got to do the happy dance. Yeah. We did it. We did it. We painted a painting. Yes, we did so. Yes, we did so. We did it today. Woo! Stupid song, but I love singing it. <laughs> There's a reason why I don't write children's songs for kids' shows. <laughs> it's not musical. I'm artistic, though. So hopefully this was just a really nice, de-stress, relax paint along. Uh, feel free to change up the color of the truck or what you put in the back. Use the traceable as you need to. Enjoy yourself. Be creative. Take that imagination for a stroll. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And we want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.